Hey everybody, this is Cassandra at Case Gem Creations with another uh, simple tutorial, a wire wrapping tutorial. I've got a black sunstone here that is about an inch and a half tall. And for my materials, I'm going to be using 20 gauge square copper wire from Rio Grande, uh, as well as some 22 gauge half round copper wire also from Rio Grande. So for my tools today, I'm going to be using some round nose pliers, nylon pliers, I've got some chain nose pliers here, some flesh cutters, I have some tweezer nose pliers, and some bent nose pliers. Uh, for this piece, I'm going to be using four pieces of square copper wire to form the structure of the pendant, and I'm going to measure each one at 12 inches long. And every time I'm drawing the wire out of the spool, I'm going to be just running it through my fingers in order to smooth it out a little bit. And I'm just going to be speeding this part up here um, a little bit. There's not really much to see. I'm just uh, measuring out and smoothing out four pieces of square copper wire here. And once I have all four of those, um, I'm going to draw myself off a little uh, length of that half round wire, usually about seven inches or so. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start lining up those square wires so that they're uh, evenly spaced and they're all lined up next to each other in a neat row of four. And I'm gonna find um, that halfway mark about six inches or a little off of six inches and start um, winding my half round wire around the frame wires that I've got here with the flat side down. And I'm just taking my time with this here. I don't wanna to move too fast or pull too tightly because those frame wires are gonna to start to bunch together and they're not gonna sit in that nice neat row if you put too much tension on this half round wire at this point. And at this point here, my wires do start to uh, collapse in on themselves a little bit. So I'm going to be grabbing my nylon pliers um, and just adding a little bit of compression here just to straighten these all back out. And then I'll go ahead and continue winding that half round wire until I have a nice little coil, the length that I'm looking for to form the foundation or the bottom of my pendant. And once I've got the length that I'm looking for, I'll take my flesh cutters and I'm going to cut that half round wire so that the cut side is somewhere along the middle of that panel of frame wires that I've got going on. This is going to be on the inside of the pendant and uh, those cut ends are going to be tucked uh, right next to the stone so they're not going to be accessible from the outside. So I'm just going to make sure I like the spacing of that there kind of right at that six inch mark. And then I'll compress everything down again with my nylon pliers to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to um, bend my frame upwards in a bit of a U shape so I can establish um, a shape that I'm looking for to house this stone. And then I'll place everything down on my flat work surface. This makes it a little bit easier. And I'll hold the stone and the bottom of my uh, frame down in place with my left hand and draw all these wires together up at the top with my right to start forming that teardrop shape that I'm looking for. And I'm just going to take a minute here to um, take away the, the front two wires of this pendant. I don't want to include them in this next step. And then I'll go ahead and just further bend those wires just to establish the shape that I'm looking for. But nothing too harsh or angular at this point. I still need these room, uh, these wires to have some room to move around once they're all bound together. And then after that, I'm going to cut myself a couple little pieces of half round wire, just a few inches. And I'm going to be using these to 
uh, wrap up the remaining three wires that I didn't uh, tuck away. It's a little bit of a struggle until you kind of move those front two wires around a bit, but essentially I'm just doing the same thing that I was doing at the very bottom of the pendant. I'm wrapping a, a little length of half round wire with the flat side down just around those three wires here and this is going to help secure uh, the sides of the frame so that the stone can't pop out the sides. And you can make this length as short or as long as you like. Uh, for my preferences I just like to wind the wire around about five times. Uh, and then I'll make sure that I cut those wires so that the cut sides are inside the frame. And if you need a little help at this point, it's a great time to start using uh, your tools. Uh, they get into places that maybe your fingers would have a bit of a hard time uh, getting into. And this is where I'm going to snip off uh, this wire here. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side, try to make it look pretty symmetrical. And once I'm happy with the spacing uh, and the distance away from the bottom of the pendant, I'm trying to make it look pretty symmetrical here. I'll go ahead and take my nylon pliers again and just compress these down to keep them exactly where I want them. So after I'm happy uh, with the placement, I'll go ahead and add those omitted two front wires back into the frame. Um, I'm just going to shape them loosely and uh, add them back in with the rest of the group essentially. And then I can get working on the next step which is going to be trapping the stone in place. So what I like to do for this next part is uh, loosely hold the two sides of the frame together. And I'm going to use a scrap piece of wire to do this. I'm going to wrap it so that the two sides of the frame are neatly lined up together in two rows of four. And I'm gonna use that scrap wire to hold everything in place, but not super tight because I still need these wires to be able to uh, slide down as I am trapping that stone in place. And then at this point, I'm starting to see that the, um, the very bottom coil of half round wires is off center and I'm not liking that. So I can still go ahead and slide these around. I'm just going to grab them in little increments and then slide them over a little bit towards the right, which is where um, I need them to be in order to be a little bit more centered. So I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll take another look and just continue inching things over a little bit to the right until I'm happy with how it's centered. And there we go. So now to form the back supports, um, I'm going to take my round nose pliers and just grab onto that very back wire on the, the lineup of frame wires and inch these inwards. So it forms a little triangle on the back. And these prongs are what's going to hold the flat back of the cabochon in place and make sure that that stone can't fall out the back of the pendant. I'm also just going to take my bent nose pliers here and just line up the back a little bit more so I've got a nice even opening up near the top and I'll need that for later. I'm also taking those pliers and making sure that my half round wire is nice and secure in all the spots that I wound it. And then when I pop the stone in place, everything is nice and trapped at the back. 
So next I'm going to take those wires that I didn't trap on the sides and I'm going to move them around so that they're up over the very face of the stone. Not right up the middle, but just enough to hold that stone in place over the shoulder of the cabochon. And when I'm happy with how that's looking, and, and as long as it's looking pretty symmetrical, I'm going to take the next wire closest to the front and use my round nose pliers again to, same as the back, kind of twist them forwards and upwards a little bit so they form these little triangles and this is going to further add some support um, as well as just an interesting look to the sides of the pendant here and I'll do that on both sides on either side of the little coil of a uh, half round wire that I put on the side of this pendant. And then when I'm happy with the placement of those wires, I can go ahead and start bending the very top of the pendant closer and closer together and making sure all eight of those wires are still lined up nice and tight because they are going to become a little bit displaced as you move them up over the face of the stone, especially because this stone is on the thicker side in terms of uh, the profile. And I'll use my nylon pliers just to clamp those down and make sure it's nice and flat. And at this point, I can also kind of arrange the wires over the face of the stone just to make sure I'm liking the look from the front and the sides. And the next step is going to be making the bail. So I'm going to use my chain nose pliers just to really get a nice bend where I want the bail to start. And I'm going to use my half round wire straight off the spool in order to get that started. So with the flat side of the wire down, right at the base where I made that bend, I'm going to start wrapping this half round wire around all eight of those frame wires up at the top here. And I'll do that maybe five or six times, just depending on the look that I'm going for. And once I'm happy with that placement, I'm gonna go ahead and take that tail end and I'm just gonna pop it through that opening that I, I left up at the top here and use some pliers to pull that tail end upwards and outwards and get it really wedged in between the two sides of the frame. And I'll do a second little rotation of that just to make sure it's extra secure. And I'll use my flush cutters to snip off that tail end really, really close to the pendant. This is all going to get covered uh, by the end. So next I'm going to clamp that half round wire down just to make sure everything's looking nice and smooth. And I'm gonna isolate two wires from the very front of the pendant here that I'm going to move forward and use to form my bail. So I'll just continue using that half round wire that was already applied, piggyback it over and then just start wrapping around just these two isolated wires in order to form the bail wire. And once I get over that little bend near the bottom, it's really easy to just rotate the pendant around with your non-dominant hand and then guide that half round wire in place with your right hand. I'm just holding it down with my forefinger and thumb and bracing everything against my hand and then just twisting the pendant with my other hand. And you can see that wire just starts to lay itself down in this nice little spiral. And I'm gonna do this um, around and around until I've established about an inch or so, maybe a little bit more than that. And that's what's gonna form the, the little loop at the top of the pendant or the bail. And once I've gotten to that point, I'm going to go ahead and snip off a bit of a tail at the, uh, the end of that half round wire there. 
and I'm going to use my nylon pliers to compress everything down and make sure I've got a nice smooth looking bale. And I'm also going to use those pliers to make a bend downward right where that coil of half round wire ends so I've got a little bit of an angle. Now I'm going to separate my wires off to the sides. I'm going to separate it so I've got two wires off to the left and four off to the right. And then through that opening, I'm going to bend my bale just around my thumb and then close that gap so I've got a nice little loop at the top. And I can just kind of manipulate a little bit until I get the shape I'm looking for. And once I'm happy with that shape, I'm going to take that tail end that I left myself of half round wire and bind everything together, the two sides of the bale, with that half round wire back downwards for, to where I started. And once I get to the bottom, um, I'm going to snip off a little bit of that extra length that I don't need and save it for another part of this project. And then I'm going to take that tail end and tuck it in through the opening I have at the top of the pendant, just like I did at the beginning. So I'll pop it through the back and I'll grab it with my pliers and pull it outwards and upwards. And then I will do one more complete rotation before snipping off the end. And then that's the bail part complete. I'm going to take a second here just to inspect everything from all angles and just make sure I like the shape of the bale so far. I'll just compress those wires down a little bit and I'm also going to use my round nose pliers just to bend the bale backwards slightly. I just want to make sure I have enough room for a chain to slide through the back. So now I'm going to use those wires on either side of the top of the pendant here to make some embellishments. I'm going to separate out my wire on the right side, take the one closest to the front of the pendant and curve it down over the front of the bale. And then I'll put my finger back down on it, twist my whole pendant around, and then I've got this nice little loop right at the top. And I'll take my next three wires and just follow them down so they form a nice curved C shape around that initial loop. So once I'm happy, with the flow and the shape of those wires, I'm going to put my thumb over those other two wires on the left hand side. And I'm gonna bend these downwards and over the front of the pendant so that they're lined up with the rest of the wires around the front here. I'm then gonna hang on to that little curved shape that I made and pull all the wires towards the back of the pendant and wrap them all the way back around to the front of the pendant trying to keep them all lined up as nicely as I can. And I'm gonna make some room at the back by moving those bail wires off to the side. And once I'm happy with how all six of these wires are all lined up here, I'm gonna take them all the way to the back a second time. And then I'm going to cut off that excess wire so that there's about a half a centimeter or so of overhang over the back wire here of my frame. And once I have those trimmed down, I'm going to use my bent nose pliers to start bending those wires towards the inside of the frame and once they're all guided in place i'm going to use those same pliers to clamp them down around the outside and the inside of the frame really really tightly and this is how they're going to stay anchored down at the back so my last step is going to be to use up these two ends of the bale wire here so once I've adjusted some things and I'm happy with the shape of it, I'm going to take those last two wires and pull them around the front. And then I'm going to hang on to them near the top and I'm going to start curving them. And I'm going to release the outside one and continue curving the inside wire into a nice little curl. 
and then line them back up again. And then I'll take my thumb, hold everything down, and start curling them in the opposite direction, just like a little S shape. And that scrap piece of wire I cut off uh, earlier, I'm going to use that right now. I'm going to tuck it into that frame wire with the flat side up this time, and then underneath that little curved shape that I made. And at this point, things are a little bit tight down here, so I'm going to want to take some pliers and slightly lift up that frame wire that I have uh, right against the stone there just to make a little bit of a gap to make it easier for me to insert that half round wire again. So I'll reposition everything so that that half round wire is right at the, the apex of that little curve. And then I'm going to tuck the end of the wire back under the frame, back under that curve, and essentially lash all three of these wires together with some half round wire. And I'm going to do that a total of three times. So once I've got those three loops, I'm going to pretty firmly pull on everything to make sure it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to use my flush cutters to cut that half round wire right where it meets the frame wire so it can't be touched from the outside. And I'm going to trim off a little bit of excess length of that uppermost wire. And I'll use my round nose pliers to start curling things in a counterclockwise direction just following the natural flow of that curve already in place. And I'm gonna tighten the very inside just by using my tweezer nose pliers to close that gap a bit and continue curling nice and tight with those round nose pliers until I've got a nice little swirl. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers again and curl that very last wire in the opposite direction, so a clockwise direction. And I'll close that gap again, just like before, with those tweezer nose pliers, just to make sure it's nice and tight. And then finish curling everything in place so there's a nice little coil in the opposite direction. So once I'm happy with the position of these little curls that I've got sort of down the face of the stone here, I'm just going to take one final look at everything from all angles. Um, I'll just make sure I like how everything is positioned and I might need to push and pull at some of these wires a little bit just to make sure I like the flow. Uh, like up at the top here, I might just want to move some things around a little bit to make sure it's nice and smooth kind of from every angle. But with that, the pendant is essentially done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you'd like to give it a shot, um, I'd love to see your finished works. You can tag me on TikTok um, and Instagram at Creations, And I will be back again soon with another tutorial.